Hello. So in ancient history, creating software involved a lot of manual labor. You would run your compilers by hand, run tar on a bunch of compilation products, and the more sophisticated of us would define make files and where they manually encode their dependencies and the commands that are run. I hear some of us still do that today, to this day, but are working on improving that state. <laughs> uh, naturally, for people like me, who keep forgetting what the arguments to tar were and how to write a class path, uh, that's unsatisfying. So along came the IDEs they that do a lot of things for you, that offer you an interface for the whole software development lifecycle. So you have nice colorful buttons for editing, formatting, refactoring, building, running, testing, debugging, deploying, and so on. Uh, the IDE will also give you a structure for organizing the code into modules and projects. Um, and yes, I work on such an IDE, the IntelliJ plugin for Scala. My name is Justin. You can find me on Twitter as evenvat. Uh, and we also have a team Twitter for the Scala plugin now ca called IntelliJ Scala intuitively. And I'm going to talk about a bit uh, the build server protocol, what motivated it and how it will enable us to have a more integrated developer experience. Just out of interest, uh, who of you uses IntelliJ and Scala? That's nice, that's almost all except one. Um, <laughs> uh, also, who, just, who noticed we just released the 219.1 version? Yeah, that's, um, yeah, that's plenty. Uh, check for updates. We have new stuff. If I have time in the end, I'll give a short demo. Uh, also, who knew that we most of our code is on GitHub, open source and free and everything? Yeah, we take contributions, just so you know. Right, so IDEs are great and all, but um, they do, they are kind of bound to your desktop. Um, so there are various special purpose tools that uh, become more popular over time again, Let, such as for, for building projects and within a build tool, there will be uh, various functionalities such as dependency management and testing. Uh, that are increasingly outsourced to special purpose libraries or tools. And these do have the advantage that they're cross-platform, they have a command line interface that you can use from everywhere, but also they have a command line interface. That's not so nice, I'd like to keep using my favorite development front end. So, this, this causes a variety of integration issues. You see there's a bit of a style mismatch here. Or a in mismatch in interfaces. You have the buttons in your front end, but you have various command line commands or APIs in the background. And, well, historically we've tried to integrate with these tools by creating special purpose integrations, such as for Scala tests, for specs, for SBT, Akka Play, Scala format, and so on. And, well, that turns out to be a lot of work. And other tools have this issue too, such, have you heard of uh, Bloop? It's a, uh, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a compile server, so a bit more specialized than a build tool uh, that's being developed by the Scala Center. So, which just has the goal of optimizing the compile framework. So, it loop is sort of short for build loop, uh, so that compiles work more quickly. And Bloop 2 integrates with various build tools such as SBT and MIL and Maven and Gradle, 
and Bazel, and also needs to write a special purpose integration for that. Now, build tools in Scala, uh, we've just heard it mentioned. There are plenty of choices you can make. So there's the traditional Maven and Gradle. Uh, there's SBT, which is the most popular at the moment. And there's little coherence between how you use these tools, how you configure these tools. And I really just want to use my favorite front end, which is IntelliJ. So yeah, we, you have this sort of tangle here of ways of using tools. Uh, there's a haphazard integrations that we have for SPT, for instance. And yeah, in the, in the case of SPT, what we did is write a special SPT plugin just to extract the project structure and various information about the SPT build. And then this gets imported as an XML file into IntelliJ and then gets read and then again mapped to the IntelliJ project model. And then there's another SPT plugin to enable the interaction with the SPT shell. So you can just so you can run shells in the SPT task add SPT tasks over the shell from IntelliJ and know when they're actually done. And that doesn't even give us yet a good compiler output, so it still gets spammed to the SPT shell. Mm. So yeah, there's these loose threads of tooling, and one of my hobbies is knots. I like to tie stuff together, so I like to, I'd like to tie these loose ends together to create a more integrated developer experience. Now, about that, uh, of course, there's prior art. Let's have a look at the language server protocol, which was actually developed by Microsoft uh, for the Visual Studio Code editor. Mm, this defines a standard way to report error messages to the front end, usually an editor, and addresses one major uh, integration bottleneck, so between editor and compiler. So a language server is a sort of compiler front end. Uh, and the editor connects to the language server over this protocol, which is based on JSON RPC. So a fairly standard client server protocol. And just tells the, uh, the language server when there's some edit that's happened, and the language server then knows about how to compile the project or the file and give some updates. This works mostly on the file and folder level, which is uh, OK for many cases, but it's not sufficient to import a project fully into an IDE such as IntelliJ, because there is no concept of the build structure and interdependencies between modules. So yeah, uh, many people have been asking us if we're going to support or going to use language server protocol for Scala 3 since the current IDE support for Scala 3 is based on LSP. Uh, the answer is probably not uh, for reasons which are good and technical and not Microsoft. Um, but I'll try to explain some of them. So yeah, I mentioned the the LSP does not model the structure of the code base, so it wouldn't enable us to resolve dependencies, for instance, or uh, create indices of dependencies and files. And, and but the major reason is uh, that it doesn't have a concept of the syntax tree. So in IntelliJ, we support every language. Uh, by writing our own parser and type checker for this language, which enables uh, us to do all the refactorings and error highlightings and write our own inspections, so basically linting on this tree. Uh, this tree also supports uh, errors, or like code with which does not 
parse correctly, but we can still handle it in the editor. And that's not currently covered by LSP or anything. Uh, additionally, there is no common concept of building a project or building a module or testing or running. So these would be, in LSP, still language-specific extensions. Now, uh, I've spent a lot of time on improving the SPT support for IntelliJ. But uh, as you've heard, there's plenty of new build tools coming out. There's MIL, uh, there's this emerging Wrath uh, coming out of the sand. And uh, realistically, I can't justify for myself the increased time, maintenance cost, and development cost, and the complexity to our own code base. If to support each one of them, especially given they often still have limited user bases. But I mean, as I mentioned, we do take contributions. So maybe, John, would you like to contribute IntelliJ support in Fury uh, or Fury support for IntelliJ? What do you mean you did most of the work? I did most of the work. <laughs> 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 so right. I'm standing on the shoulders of this guy. Sure. <laughs> Well, I, actually, I expected a no, uh, <laughs> but... Oh, right, you're English. <laughs> British, <laughs> sorry. Uh, but uh, then... Then... But I'll show you something of oh, this... It's very low resolution. So here's Fury, and I'll just click open in IntelliJ and use BSP. Finish, yes. And it, something is happening. How do I know it's on my screen? Oh, here it is. Oops. So we seem to have a whole project here. You can't see it because the resolution is so low. Uh, but th this is actually the Fury project opened in IntelliJ, and it mostly just works. Uh, I can, say, navigate to menu. Wait, let me use the, where is it? Presentation mode. It's slightly better. And I can, in fact, it's I can navigate to sources and stuff. So, so if you wanted to contribute to Fury and you're, you really need to use IntelliJ, you can do so right now. The support still needs to be developed a bit, but, you know, basically it's there. Now back to the presentation. Right. So how do how did I do that? Uh, by yeah, John mentioned it. I added uh, build server protocol support to Fury, and IntelliJ is a build server protocol BSP client. So, uh, and I did spend a bit of time on implementing this. So I, I've given a talk on BSP right here last last year. So some of what I'm going to say might sound familiar if you have been here before. Um, and well, as Abraham Lincoln or somebody said, give me six hours to fell a tree and I will spend four hours sharpening the ax. I say, give me one month to support a build tool and I will spend the first year developing a protocol. Uh, I have not done this on my own, uh, so the build server protocol was in fact uh, thought up by um, Olaf and Jorge at the Scala Center. They gave the initial impulse to do this for their own reasons, uh, but I thought, okay, if I want to support any more build tools, I need a more effective way of doing this. So I joined the effort and implemented it in the IntelliJ Scala plugin. 
Now, the uh, build server protocol is very strongly inspired by LSP. It actually extends it and complements it. It reuses some of the concepts. But uh, it aims to abstract the project model into a few generic concepts that map to most build tools most of the time and map to uh, clients' IDEs most of the time. And it defines several common operations as JSON RPC requests, such as uh, give me your build structure or compile. And so these have uh, common semantics. Mm. So I'll give some basic concepts. I mentioned it's a client-server protocol, uh, not strictly client-server, it's bidirectional, so the client uh, connects to the server, but once that happens, uh, they can send each other requests or notifications. Uh, requests are things that expect a response, notifications are just uh, one shot, they just give information, they're just informational. Most of the time, the client sends requests in SBT, uh, sorry, in BSP. Only the client sends requests in LSP. There are a few requests that the server can send. And most of the time, the server sends notifications, such as updates on the build state. So uh, we have uh, eventually a variety of build servers, such as Bloop and Fury currently. And we have a variety of clients, such as IntelliJ, or the Metals language server, which is also being developed by the Scala Center. Um, and uh, you need some way to for them to discover each other. So I could hard code support for each build server into IntelliJ, but obviously that will require work on my part if there's a new build tool. So you can't start using it immediately. For to solve this, uh, we define the server re discovery connection protocol. It's quite simple, really. When you install a server, it writes a connection file, just a JSON with some basic information, how to run a program, a certain program, into either the workspace of your project or to a space in your user directory or in the system uh, where exactly is specified in the protocol and it's uh, system dependent. The client then just discovers these files, uh, sees, okay, which build servers are available uh, and hopefully which ones can I use to connect to a project and it can ask the user which build tool would you like to use. Once that has happened, we have a bunch of lifecycle requests and notifications. So for instance, on connection, the client just does uh, initialize request to the server. The server responds and gives a initialized notification. At that point, it expects the client may expect the server to be ready. And then all the interesting stuff happens. And once the client is done, shuts down, it can also tell the server, please shut down and exit and let it be over with. Now, the interesting stuff. Uh, uh, BSP defines a certain way of describing the build structure. So the main concept is the build target. It's simply a uh, collection of sources that you expect to be compiled together. And this maps onto uh, modules in IntelliJ or modules in Fury or projects in SBT. And uh, it's a very common concept throughout most build tools. It's most uh, strongly inspired by the way Bazel builds are structured. And if you ask for these Targets, you'll get the number of target IDs and some metadata about them, such as capabilities. So if you can compile this target or test or run the target, 
gives you some language-specific data. So is this a Scala target or uh, Kotlin or Java or something else? And crucially, uh, dependencies. So it tells you what other targets does a target depend on. Um, and the other interesting request is the sources. So uh, build target may be associated with any number of sources, and vice versa. A source file or directory may belong to any number of build targets. Then we have a number of build actions, very common ones like compile, test, and run, especially compile. And this works simply by the client requesting a compile for a number of targets. The server will then hopefully do this and eventually give a result. During the course of the compilation, there can be a bunch of notifications from the server to the client, uh, like diagnostics, which I'll explain in a moment, and progress notifications. That gives information about the state of the compile. Uh, diagnostics sent from the server to the client, they're typically error or warning message messages associated with a specific file and location. So you have uh, in file boo, you have uh, an error in line 23 and columns 16 to 40, and, and that allows the, the uh, client to either highlight it in their editor or just give a nicely formatted message. This is analogous to how the diagnostics in LSP work. Uh, there's also a notion of messages, so just, for instance, log messages or informational things that are not bound to a specific file location. So since in BSP we often have longer running tasks, such as compilation, we defined a, a progress API, so there's progress notifications, so during a build or at any time, actually, the server may send the client a notification that a specific task has started, such as compilation of module A in your project, and then send regular updates. Hey, I compiled 20 files out of 5,000. I compiled 100 files, and so on, until this subtask finishes. And these, yeah, these will typically be associated with a request, but they need not be. Uh, there's various other things, but I'm not going to go into that because that would just be boring right now. So instead, I'm going to explain a bit about how IntelliJ uh, handles the BSP as a client. So currently, it's still a hidden feature, but you can try it out right now. Uh, it didn't quite make it in the 2019.1 release, but it will be hopefully in two weeks uh, officially released, uh, at, at supporting the BSP protocol version 2.0, which we're currently coordinating on with Scala Center for Bloop and with John for Fury, so that we have a stable version that is <coughs> compatible with all others, with each other. And at that point, we can look into supporting more build tools or even more clients. Uh, the current implementation only supports Scala targets, but that will soon be improved as well. So I mentioned the build targets and the concept of modules in IntelliJ, they're very similar, but not exactly the same. Also, in SPT, we have the concept of projects. So here, this diagram sort of shows you what happens when you try to import a SPT project into IntelliJ via BSP. Uh, currently, this happens with Bloop, so you can uh, export an SPT project to the Bloop structure, Bloop 
acts as a BSP server and you could import this project into IntelliJ via BSP from loop. That's a bit of a roundabout thing, but it, at least it gives us a good uh, base to experiment with. So in SPT, we have uh, projects. Projects have various scopes, such as compile and test and others, but we'll ignore them. Um, when you do, when you export this to Bloop, so you need to install a SPT plugin for uh, the SPT Bloop. Then you can run Bloop install, and this will export it to the Bloop structure, which corresponds to the BSP structure. So uh, BSP targets don't have scopes, so instead we map these scopes to different targets, compile and test. That and but otherwise we can depend on the same sources as in the SPT projects because both SPT and BSP support sources associated with multiple targets or projects. Now when we go into IntelliJ, uh, we don't have this option because uh, for technical reasons again, uh, in IntelliJ, one source directory needs to be associated with only one module. One module may have multiple source directories, of course. Uh, so what we do there is we match these compile and test scopes by their base directory. It's just a heuristic. But what, what can we do uh, to map them to a single IntelliJ module? And when we have shared sources, we detect that when they're shared between multiple modules and create a synthetic module that, that has these sources as in that is associated with these sources. Um, so this works most of the time, except when it doesn't, namely for, uh, for instance, cross projects. So if you try to build the same sources against multiple platforms such as Scala.js and JVM. One module will only have uh, one set of dependencies. So this shared source module, we need to pick one set. Uh, right now, we just pick any one. It might be JS or JVM. And that causes a lot of suffering for people. And uh, we're still trying to find ways around this. One possible way around is is uh, to define on the BSP server side, uh, be able to switch contexts. So like we could just take this side out and then these sources would only be shared by one module. And then we don't have this, but then we can't uh, build against multiple targets at the same time that will be still need to be done on the build tool side. So in, in Fury, I think this might be supported by schemas, uh, but in other, in other build tools, you might have to configure your project in a specific way. That's unfortunate, but that's what we're working with right now. So compile requests. Uh, we have a nice little output. Once I get around to showing you, come on. No. Where is it? I shouldn't have closed it before. I didn't want to load Fury. I wanted Come on. Present. The 
this is surprisingly unergonomic way to use a computer. Now it's over here, okay. So for instance, here we have the Akka project, and which is imported into IntelliJ via BSP instead of SPT. And I just click build and we get a nice build tool window output here. So I don't know if you can see this due to the resolution, but what's happening here, we get information uh, update that the Akka protobuf uh, project has been compiled. Currently, Akka actor is being compiled. You get a nice list of warnings right here that are directly navigable. So this is uh, an improvement on the state of the art we have with SVT, I think. So while this runs, you you get the current updates, and you'll be able to see uh, how long any one module has taken to compile. So you can drill down into that where your compiler bottlenecks are. Mm, continuing with that. So this is uh, was a short demo of compile requests and notifications in BSP. Don't worry, lunch is up. There's about time for an hour time for lunch, so. <laughs> but of course, if you're hungry, don't let me stop you. Now, uh, there's still a lot to do on the BSP front. So the protocol version 2.0 is just around the corner. Uh, we're coordinating with Bloop and Fury for the 2.0 version and want to add more support for more build tools. Uh, the support in IntelliJ itself is far from complete, so it currently only supports Scala modules, but more languages are definitely planned and necessary. Uh, the mapping of projects to IntelliJ modules is currently not as robust as it could be. That will be improved as well as actually running tests and uh, main methods via BSP. Uh, IntelliJ offers this, of course, via its run configurations, which works fine for the moment, which I didn't, which is why I didn't uh, focus on that. Now, going beyond BSP, I'm, I'm hoping BSP can be a model for further ways to integrate tools. Uh, so here's just a bunch of ideas for your inspiration. Like, within BSP, we could eventually support remote building and testing, but it's not clear to me how yet, because usually you still want the sources locally. Uh, there could be some extension for code formatting. I think within LSP, we already have some way of doing that, but if we have a standard action for that, uh, it would enable to support more code formatting tools easily from the IDE. And uh, question marks, so this is the place where you can insert your ideas. So it's if, you're, if you're working on a tool yourself, uh, I'm, I'm very interested to talk to you to see if we can coordinate on something. So personally, I'm pretty busy already with SPT and BSP and uh, going around to various conferences. But uh, in general, it would be great to work on making, integrating these experiences more effectively than we're currently doing it. There are, of course, challenges involved in this uh, because every tool is kind of different and you have to ask yourself, does it make sense to create a protocol as a common abstraction to work with these tools, to communicate between tools. And naturally, there's this adoption bottleneck, which we currently have with BSP. So we are only supporting it in currently 
fairly unknown tools such as Bloop or Fury, which don't have a large user base. But my hope is that we get to uh, gather some experiences there and then apply the gained knowledge to uh, more widely used tools. If this works out well, we'll be able to uh, add BSP support to the IntelliJ platform as a whole. So this is uh, the sunset. This is the part where you get to give me any feedback or discussion or questions. And um, if and afterwards, I'll give you a short tour of the new features if you're interested. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, we have microphones. Okay. So thank you very much for your talk. Uh, my question is: Is the uh, current uh, BSP implementation tied to language server protocol, some existing language server protocol? The reason I'm asking is that um, Dati and with Scala 3 uh, will roll out their own language server protocol. Mm -hmm. Will it be um, utilized by your BSP? Uh, the language server protocol itself n it, well, is not used by IntelliJ, but uh, it is, so BSP is defined, designed to work with language server protocol. In fact, as a kind of a back end for language servers. So you can implement BSP on the build tool side and a uh, language server may use the build tool to run builds in specific modules, for instance. Uh, when the a language server protocol client requests this. So th this was actually the original inspiration for BSP to have a protocol on the build to side to work with the Metals language server. Mm -hmm. uh, you had a question? We have a microphone. So uh, thanks for the talk. Thank you. As always, it was uh, very interesting. Um, I just, um, regarding your question, or one of your last questions about should we support more languages? Is this the right way uh, to, to do this with a protocol? Um, I just found out about something called IT for IT. It's kind of um, the, the, the opposite of this. It's uh, a bunch of managers. They decided on a bunch of tools that everybody should use. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of um, like their solution for this, right? Uh, standard standardizing instead standardizing of the, the tools instead of the protocols. Exactly. Um, the, the apparently, they successfully did it for like um, many languages, from COBOL to C and Java and stuff like that. So, do you have any opinion about that, or? Oh, I have an opinion, <laughs> just my personal one. I, I, I think it's uh, valuable to have more tools, more choices of tools to explore solution spaces. If we just uh, standardize on one tool, then I, I believe this will ossify the whole development proce process and w we won't really have much innovation. Just the standardization on tools, I have experienced it a lot of cases and then usually the developers try to bypass this. So I have, uh, for example, seen a project where there was NetBeans imposed on everybody, and then people found out, well, you won't get killed if you use IntelliJ, mm -hmm. and 99% use that, and one guy uses NetBeans, but you still have to uh, work around. So I think uh, if you really think what the people do, this shows what they want to do and yeah, exactly. where they are efficient. And so if you standardize the protocols and you say you can work with whatever you like, but you need to follow these uh, standards, it's much, much, much better. Yes, yeah, so I think you. this will enable to work with many different tools more effectively, which, uh, which is yeah, great, great for developers. Uh, any more comments? No. Uh, so at this point, it's 14.12. Uh, there is lunch. For those of you who are less hungry, 
I'll just give some bonus slides on our new release. Just a few minutes. So one of the features we introduced uh, or actually improved is making four comprehensions more comprehensible by allowing uh, by by <laughs> treating the left arrow as a reference to the corresponding for each map flat map and the ifs as t a reference to the filter or with filter functions in that are being used. I think I can. I well I. I think I can demonstrate it in IntelliJ if the screen here allows me. Come on. File open res. Don't need this one. And it landed over here. Prison. Presentation mode. That's better. And here's some examples of how this looks. So you'll actually get the left arrow highlighted as an error because cannot resemble, resolve symbol map in this has no map object. Likewise here, uh, if the type is incorrect previously, we wouldn't uh, highlight that if the, if, the map, if the generator didn't yield a correct type. Now we do, so you get better feedback on what's actually happening. Likewise, here for the if, if it's not a type Boolean, you'll get an error highlighting. Or if a object doesn't have a with fil filter or filter method, this will also get highlighted as an error. Um, another nice thing is the desugaring of four expressions has been improved. So you can transform this for expression into a uh, regular expression with map. It's right here, the sugar. And you'll get this nested flat map map expression. What else do we have? All right. It will also show quick docs if you hover over it. Uh, display implicit arguments. So if you haven't noticed in our previous release, uh, we have, we're able to show implicit arguments to functions. And this now also works in four. So I'll just activate implicit, show implicit hints. And it will show you here this seek uh, gets uh, implicit can build from. Mm. And you'll be glad to hear that we now show less red squiggles. So there's various contexts in which we did this. I don't have a demo that for that ready, but it includes constructors and partial unification and support for some compiler plugins and uh, macros. Uh, one feature many people liked is the finding implicit usages. So the first thing you'll notice when I go on here on this implicit val person ordering, it, it will highlight the dot sorted, but that's just within the file, so it gets passed to this dot sorted. And you may also oops find usages. So this feature actually relies on 
indexing of the bytecode, so it only works when a project has already been compiled. So now we're running the compiler, and it fails because this other example has compile errors. I'll just comment it. Oops. Comment this out and recompile and go back to find usages. Okay, now it's able to show you where it's used. So this is a primitive example because it's only within the same file, but it works across your whole project. Um, we improved the Scala format integration. So previously, we would have a hard-coded version delivered with the IntelliJ Scala plugin. Uh, now it's customizable. So that should make it easier to use Scala format with from IntelliJ. Another nice thing is uh, decompiling to Java. Uh, so previously, if you opened a Java file, uh, a Scala class file, it would look kind of like this. Let me see if I can show this as well. Uh, project. I think this best showed from Fury, where we're not, uh, which does not yet uh, report the sources associated with class files. And this is a Java thing. But actually. This is a source dependency, so it will work. But what about where can I find something that uses uh, some Scala sources? Uh, let's say hmm? collections. Uh, where is it? Message level. Wait, I'll just go BSP and go into oh, future. No, this is available. So it didn't quite get imported right for some reason. Mm. The Scala. C yeah, try. But I think the Scala library source is no here. Yeah, you yeah, see it's not available, it only shows you here this is compiled code. Uh, this We have had this since forever, but now you can also just click decompile to Java and get the whole messy uh, Java. Yes, yeah, Scala puts all kinds of fun, fun headers into the Java class files, but you also get to analyze the Java source code as, as it looks in Java. So might be helpful for debugging. Performance. Hmm? Oh yeah, performance problems, definitely. Um, so further to reduce the footprint of the Scala plugin, get it footprint. Uh, we we separated the Hokan plugin to a separate Hokan part to a separate plugin, but you. For the moment, you needn't worry about that. It's just automatically installed, but you get to disable it if you don't need it at all. OK, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, any more questions or comments? Yeah? Thanks for the talk. Thanks. And uh, I wanted to ask, you mentioned that as LSP is not suitable for IntelliJ's project model and right. so on. Uh, so you only mentioned the syntax reason, like uh, the AST, mm -hmm. but uh, wouldn't it be possible to use your own syntax tree for highlighting of uh, syntactical errors, mm -hmm. but use LSP for semantic errors? 
possible, yes, and we're actually looking into it using LSP or BSP, in fact, for this. Uh, it does have the issue that you're basically running two language servers then. So you'd be running the IntelliJ internal parsing and type checking, and then you'd run another one for the compiling and so on. So that's a resource overhead. And then, of course, it's a complexity overhead to decide, OK, which error messages should I believe now? Should I just use them both? Or should I choose which ones? It's all possible, but it does increase the complexity. Yeah, but uh, I was uh, thinking if you had LSP for error highlighting, like semantic errors, then maybe you, would, you wouldn't have to do any sort of uh, type checking yourself. Mm. Uh, we could ignore that, but like our whole editing feature set depends on our own AST. Uh, if we, say, outsource this to um, Tasty, which is being developed for Scala 3, I believe Tasty doesn't have a concept of uh, code errors, so it, you either have it compiled to a c finished Tasty AST, or you don't because there's an error. But we want to model errors. Like, we still want to do refactorings when there's some compile problem or parsing error somewhere in the code. That's the main challenges, I think, yeah. Yes? Uh, thank you. Um, I have a uh, uh, question from user per perspective about the dependency management. Uh, um, I'm interested in um, if there are some ways in IntelliJ to find uh, if some libraries uh, are unused, like we have an unused import analysis. Mm -hmm. And uh, also related question, is there any way to, uh, for example, in navigation bar, pick any jar and find uh, to which uh, sub-project in multi-project build it corresponds? Uh, I know there are, uh, are plugins for SBT, uh, uh, like SBT tr uh, dependency tree, mm -hmm. but uh, does IntelliJ allow or something uh -huh. like this? Thank you. Technically allow, yes. Uh, practically, I don't think we have any implementation of that. Uh, I'd be definitely interested in supporting that, but currently there is no one to work on it. So we do take contributions. <laughs> Uh, anyone else? Okay, uh, I'll be around so you can talk to me and you can get JetBrains stickers and stuff. And uh, enjoy lunch. <laughs>